Kathy Griffin. Yes. What did we just do? We just had a salon for you. You're the guest of honor. Thank you. What is a salon? A salon is a dinner or lunch event where everybody sits around. No phones allowed. No phones. No um, side conversations. No side And we go around the table. And we had to, to ask permission to go to the bathroom. I don't care for that typically, but this one time I did let you go. And we had some, I mean, a lot of came up. Rosie I, O'Donnell was here. Oh. Meredith Lynch. Margaret Cho. Margaret Cho. Sia. Sia Taylor. It was. Sia sang. The, Sia did sing. What about that? And um, honestly, one of my favorite days ever. Yeah. So thank yeah, you. It was a blast. I love you. Love you. All right, guys, so we got to talk about Dylan Mulvaney, okay? And the reason why we got to talk about Dylan Mulvaney is because an interesting, well, maybe even not so interesting event happened at Penn State that I want to have a discussion about because I think that this story really highlights a few key points that I want to make about our modern society, especially when it comes to the internet and the perception of popularity or what views are popular or what points of views are popular and what points of views are not popular. And I also think that this story highlights the difference between the left and the right when it comes to acceptance of opposing points of views and free speech. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of a different direction in regards to this topic than most people who are discussing this issue because I think that there is something that is being missed here in regards to highlighting the significance of this event, an event in which you have Dylan Mulvaney, who is extremely popular on TikTok, uh, giving a speech at Penn State. And the speech was essentially about, you know, black and trans stories. You guys know what Dylan was probably talking about. I'm going to go ahead and play a, a clip here of what Dylan was talking about so you guys can get a gist of what the speech or the talk was about. Again, they're getting paid. 40k okay dylan gets paid 40k to do these speeches okay uh dylan got paid over 100k allegedly <laughs> to run the budweiser spring campaign so again this is what's happening 100 percent. i feel like like i my bigger picture i'll share with you is like my dream in life is to like have like a hello sunshine like reese witherspoon or do the ryan murphy thing and like make other people's stories and i think a lot of those stories that i want to help make are, are black and trans stories black trans stories and i know that i'm not the right one to like create those but i want to help get our foot in the door and i think i'm like one of the most privileged trans people in the world right now and i'm starting to find seats at the table and i want to be able to clear space for my other dolls and I think a big part of that is like, it's it's happening offline, but I, I have these bigger dreams of how can we look at this outside of just the day-to-day -day of TikTok and like real mainstream Hollywood. 100%. I yeah, so you heard that, okay? That was basically some Wokanese there, right? I had no clue what Dylan was saying or what point Dylan was trying to make. It seems like Dylan has been hanging around Kamala Harris quite a bit, right? So Dylan probably has developed a vocabulary of Wokanese uh, along with word salad. But what people are pointing out about this speech that Dylan Mulvaney gave at uh, Penn is that the audience was empty, right? I mean, like if you look at this event, okay, which was funded by student fees. Now, again, you know, Dylan allegedly charges 40k or about $40,000 to do these events. But yet nobody showed up, right? This was not an audience full of people, which you would think would be the case for somebody that has been promoted by the liberal social media platforms like TikTok, okay? Dylan has almost 11 million followers and it's being promoted by the White House. Uh Dylan is hanging out with celebrities. Dylan is going to uh, award ceremonies. Dylan has been embraced by Hollywood. Dylan should be generating a house full of college students, considering that Dylan's audience is mainly, you know, young people. Okay, I would say probably, honestly, young people uh, less than the age of college students. But you would think that Dylan would be able to have a packed audience full of woke college students that are ready to listen to things that Dylan has to say because 
you know, if you believe TikTok, if you believe social media, Dylan has a lot of insightful things to say about Dylan's life, okay? And, you know, all the other type of stuff that Dylan is into. So what does this mean, right? That this audience or this auditorium was empty. Well, what it means is that social media is not real life, right? And that a lot of the things that we see on social media are manufactured by these platforms to push things that in regards to broader society aren't really as popular as they would make it seem like, right? Like what this suggests is that when you see the growth of certain individuals on social media, that it is manufactured, that it is inorganic, okay? And I think that that's kind of what this signals, in my opinion, that, hey, some of the support behind this is not organic, okay? It's not organic. It's not something that people have a lot of passion for, despite what we hear from the mainstream liberal media and the woke powers that be. Because if there was, then that, that audience should have packed that auditorium right to support dylan especially considering how dylan has basically been on a victimhood tour all year right even though dylan would acknowledge that dylan is the most privileged trans person on the planet again you would think that the woke revolutionaries that claim they support this movement so much would have shown up but they didn't and again this reminds me of the argument that i make all the time about why they don't accept uh, trans individuals competing amongst themselves in sports because they know that they would have to support it, right? These individuals that claim to be so woke, right? They're for women's rights. You know, they're for minorities or so-called minorities. They don't show up to support women's sports, right? They don't watch the WNBA, okay? And one of the main reasons why I think there's so much opposition to just allowing trans people to compete amongst themselves is because they know that if they created a whole nother category of trans individuals who just compete amongst themselves, then most likely the liberals that claim they support it so much wouldn't show up, right? The same way they don't show up to support women. They wouldn't show up to that either. And that's why there's such a big push to have trans individuals compete amongst those of the opposite sex because that relieves the woke revolutionaries that claim they support trans individuals so much of the responsibility of having to actually show up and to financially support trans individuals, right? Again, it just, it, it just all makes sense, right? Just seeing that, that like that image of an empty auditorium where you would think that it should be full of people who support Dylan, right? Considering Dylan's following, considering how much Dylan has been put on a platform, the fact that people that claim they support Dylan so much didn't show up tells you everything you need to know. It really does. But it also could say something about short form content versus long form content and the ability to build an actual real engaged audience with short form versus long form content. This is the reason why I don't do shorts, right? People have approached me about doing shorts and I've declined. I said, I don't wanna do shorts because shorts, first and foremost, you, you can't talk about politics with shorts, right? You can't make points about politics and really inform people in 60 seconds in regards to any issue in politics, first and foremost. Um, but again, a lot of these social media platforms have been pushing short form content. However, I don't do it because I don't think it engages people enough. Okay. I don't think that you can develop a real conversation or a real relationship with people uh, with short form content. And this is something I picked up very early on when it came to short form content is that a lot of people were doing shorts. Okay, and they were gaining a lot of subscribers, but those subscribers were not translating into long form views, right? So somebody would get, for example, you know, 500,000 subscribers uh, with short form content and their long form content, their longer videos would not get views that translated to the subscribers, right? Because people don't care about what people have to say in a long form format when they follow that person due to short form content. Short form content, again, is not engaging, is not very intellectual, it's just very viral, okay, in nature. And that doesn't create a real fan base, that doesn't create real passion. And that's something I picked up early on, and that's why I never do shorts. I never do shorts. And, you know, people, you know, say that, you know, oh, well, you know, 
my subscribers, you know, count isn't going up as fast as it should go, you know, despite the views. Um, they're saying that, well, my channel must be being throttled and that could possibly be the case, but I think more so than anything, you have certain platforms that are promoting shorts over long form content. I don't care about that, right? I, what I care about is actual long form content that engages people. And that's why I just continue to do long form content. I don't care about the subscribers. What I do know is that people engage in my long form content and that's what really matters the most to me, right? So again, I, I find it to be fascinating. I really do. But I want to point something else out here that, you know, I think should be pointed out, which is that if that was a right winger, right? If that was Ben Shapiro, a Matt Walsh, a Michael Knowles, a Candace Owens, a Riley Gaines, not only would that whole auditorium be full because we've seen these individuals sell out these events time and time and time again on these college campuses, but you will have left-wingers in mass protesting, trying to take away their right to free speech on campus, right? But when Dylan comes to a campus, where are all the conservatives protesting Dylan's right to free speech? There are none, right? Why? Because conservatives are tolerant of other people's free speech, even if they disagree with the content of the speech, even if you disagree with somebody's opinion, conservatives don't freak out and get mad and say, oh, you can't speak on our college campus. We say, no, nah, it's not that big of a deal. Dylan is freely allowed to speak. Dylan has the right to free speech. And if Dylan wants to speak on campus, hey, we're not going to show up and protest and try to shout Dylan down and not let Dylan talk and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's not what conservatives do. Even though apparently, again, according to, you know, the liberal media and the powers that be, oh, there's so much hate out there from the right for, you know, individuals like Dylan. And that's just not true, right? The fact that you do not see conservative protests tells you everything you be, need to know about how there's not that much hate out there, right? In fact, I would argue based off what we see, there's a lot more hate for individuals like Ben Shapiro or Matt Walsh or Michael Knowles or Candace Owens than there is for somebody like Dylan, right? Because if the thesis of the left was true, then you would have saw conservative backlash, massive conservative backlash against Dylan's right to free speech on that campus, but you didn't see it. Why? Because the true tolerant people in this country are conservatives. The people who do believe in people's constitutional rights are conservative, and that extends even to people like Dylan Mulvaney, who the liberal media tells us is so hated by conservatives. It just tells you it's just not true. It's made up. But again, if that was Candace Owens, if that was, you know, a Ben Shapiro, they don't get that right. The left can't tolerate when they hear somebody that they disagree with politically speak on a college campus. They don't believe in uh, their right to freely express themselves. And this right here, folks, is the difference between the left and the right in this country, right? The left do not believe in your uh, fundamental rights. The left is not tolerant of your free speech. They aren't tolerant of that, okay? They want to take it away. They want to basically say that any disagreements with them and their ideology is hate and bigotry when it's not, right? When clearly conservatives in regards to, you know, how we tolerate opinions that we disagree with, clearly we're the most tolerant group of people. Clearly, we believe in people's rights, even when, you know, the speech that, you know, they're putting out there is in disagreement with our worldview. We're not so intolerant that we lose our minds because somebody's speaking on a college campus. We let them speak. And then the people that show up, they show up. If they want to hear it, they want to hear it. In this case right here, again, the, the picture kind of tells you everything you need to know. Left or right, nobody really cares. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.